Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Modern Mining. It's been a while since I gave an update on my GPU mining farm. So in this video, I wanted to kind of talk about the changes that I've made. I am still running my GPUs, even though I did have to turn off two of the three rigs for about a week because of how low profits got when Zealous went to $5. But since then, I've got two of the rigs back up. So let's take a closer look. Today's video is sponsored by Pinex.us, a trusted cryptocurrency exchange available in the United States. Pinex offers unique one-click trading bots that allow users to capitalize on their crypto holdings. You can either copy bots on the homepage, including my own, or build your own from scratch. Pinex offers 130 trading pairs with trading fees as low as 0.1% and is available in 47 US states. Sign up with my link down below to receive a free $30 copy of my latest Bitcoin USDT bot, available on the mobile app or the Pinex.us site. Special thanks to Pinex for sponsoring this video. Okay, so this is what the farm is looking like. This rig on the bottom is shut off. This was mainly Hynix cards, and I'm in the process of selling those off. This is my RGB rig in the middle, 123070s. That's the one that never got turned off. It has still been running this whole time, even when profits were super low. And I just turned this one back on yesterday. This is 12 cards, a mix of 3060 Ti and 3070. This was just turned back on because Zealous is encroaching back to $6. And I did the math and I am slightly profitable to be continue mining. So we're running at 2630 watts right now. And that includes the two KS0 Ultras right here that are both overclocked to 618 giga hash. And the only thing that that 2640 watts does not include is the wattage on these fans that wattage is actually going into a 120 volt power strip that's on the back there so on in a, in a separate video i'm going to go over the profitability of the ks0 ultras when they're overclocked because i still haven't actually gotten just the wattage of those and those fans to see what kind of money they're making but with those in combination with my rigs i'm making about three to four dollars profit every single day and that's between zealous zillica and caspa and they just all happen to be teal coins i don't know what it is i guess maybe because my whole mining enclosure is teal that i'm just big into the teal mining coins another update is i got a bit axe solo bitcoin miner and i'm just saying a little prayer every day that this thing hits a block because then it'll be about 200K in my pocket. I've got a video coming out on this. This was sent over for free from Bitcoin Merch to do just a quick review on. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of the other reviews. The main thing I'm gonna go over is, is this better than the Canon Avalon 3 Nano? Is it better than just hooking a GPU up to a PC and mining Bitcoin to a pool? How often can you expect to hit a block? I'm guessing it's in the 7,000 year range. It's very long time period. And what is the actual average size of a Bitcoin block? So what could you expect that payout to be? So down here at this bottom rig, you can see I've just been poaching the Hynix cards out of it. Those ones are slightly less profitable. So I'm in the process of selling those. I've already sold about five of them and there's, I've got about one left to sell. I got about $240 per 3060 Ti, so honestly, that was really good. I'm still keeping these other ones because I do think GPU mining will eventually bounce back a little bit once the crypto market as a whole bounces back, especially if you have relatively cheap power and if you are able to cool your mining farm efficiently to the point where you're only spending like 1% extra power to cool your GPUs because if you're spending like five to 10% cooling your GPUs, then it's gonna be very hard to stay profitable. You can tell that the enclosure is working well because I'm in a hoodie in August and it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit in here, very low humidity. That exhaust fan back there is running at like 25%. I love that DC exhaust fan. It only pulls like 40 watts, so it's insane. It honestly pulls pretty similar to what these two fans combined pull, but it's got a ton of CFM. And one of the added bonuses this time of year when it's cold in the morning, 
and gets way hotter in the afternoon is that I've actually been turning this exhaust fan to max and then closing off my intake vents in the garage and opening the door to the house and opening all the windows so that cold air is filling my house from the outside and all the hot air is eventually getting sucked down into the garage and out that exhaust fan. It's basically like an attic fan, except it's a garage fan. It pulls all the heat out of the house and pulls the fresh air in. And when this thing is cranked up to max, it's pulling a ton of air in. One thing I wanted to mention is that Zealous on hashrate.no is not very accurate. I mean, it says that I'm nowhere near profitable, but when you get your overclocks right and you mine Zillica in combination with it on K1 pool, then you honestly are profitable at 11 cents. Not very profitable, but at least to the point where you can continue running and DCAing into some of these coins while yield is extremely high. And that is when you're gonna get a big bag of coins and hopefully see huge price appreciation on those coins when the bull run finally comes. So let's talk about profitability real quick. I'm mining about one Zealous every single day, which at today's prices is like $6, maybe a little bit less. And at 2,600 watts, I'm spending about $6 a day in electricity. So on Zealous alone, I'm breaking even, but that 2,600 watts is also accounting for these KS zeros that are making about $2 a day total. So that would be $2 a day profit. And then I'm mining about $1 a day in Zillica. So that would be another dollar a day profit for a total of about $3 a day profit, $20 a week or $80 a month. It's not great, especially with all the hardware that I do have, but the crypto market has been down and continues to be kind of in this slump. So eventually when it does turn around, I'm expecting this to start actually making some good money again. That'll be very nice if we can get this whole farm into the like $10 profit range a day, I'll be more than happy. Keep mining everybody. Don't trust the hash rate NO numbers. Actually overclock your GPUs and check the dollar value that you're mining every day because if there's a decent chance if you're under 11 cent power or at 11 cent that you are still profitable. So make sure you check that out before turning everything off. So my next steps for the farm is I'm gonna continue to work on efficiency making this as efficient as possible. That's why I swapped Hynix cards out and put Samsung cards in, and I overclocked my KS0 Ultras, and though they're less efficient, they're getting more yield, and with more yield, I think is gonna go up in price, so that should actually increase our ROI time. Even with the extra hardware that we had to put into those overclocks, it's gonna pay that off if Casp even goes to like 30 cents eventually. As far as new hardware, I'm not gonna get anything at this point. I was debating on getting an AL0, a Lithium ASIC, but I think with the Bitmain ASICs that are coming out, profits are gonna drop super hard on those, and with them being $800, it's a bit of a gamble. So I'm actually, probably not gonna be buying any new hardware for a while. I'm gonna be sitting on what I have here and waiting for maybe the next generation of miners to come out. I would like to get into maybe a Litecoin slash Dogecoin ASIC or even an Ethereum Classic ASIC, but that's just something I need to look into more because the current ones are a bit old and they are a bit pricey. So maybe if a new generation comes out, that's what I would look at getting next. So one other thing while we're talking about GPU mining, I'm having an issue right now where one of my cards is crashing on this rig that I just booted up yesterday. And I believe it's just an overclock issue, but since this is a 3060 Ti, I might as well swap it for a 3070 and just deal with it later. So I'm in the process of swapping in a 3070, but I've noticed that every time I restart this rig, and actually it's happening to my other ones too, Every time I restart it, it does not apply the overclocks that are in the flight sheet config, in the actual Regal Miner config. And honestly, that could be pretty dangerous for some people if their farms aren't properly specced out. So just to show you, with the overclocks enabled, every card is running about 80 to 90 watts. That's normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap this in and restart this and show you guys that these are all gonna be at like 150 watts because of some sort of Hive OS glitch. And the only way to fix it is to stop the miner and then reapply the flight sheet, which is something that you have to do manually and not everyone is gonna to know to do. 
So let's check this out real quick and then I want you guys to tell me in the comments if you know how to fix it. It's pretty nice. I have all these cards marked with a number so I just know exactly which one is having the issue. And it's this one right here on the end. I never had this issue before when this rig ran for months on end after I've restarted it from a week off, now it's crashing. So I'm just gonna replace it, but it's nice to be able to mark them so you know exactly what card to pull because I've got a lot of cards that look the exact same on this rig. All right, I've got it switched out. Let's go ahead and turn this on and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, that it's not gonna apply the overclocks. In a minute, I'll take this 3060 Ti and just put it down on this rig so that if profits do ever come back, I can quickly boot this up and get another five cards going. Also, at some point, need to do something with these two server cases that I got in a bulk deal. So these are Lee and Lee cases, and I don't have any use for them right now. But maybe during the winter when I move cards into the house, I may use these, though the server case fans will probably be pretty loud. But let me know if you want me to do anything with these. So let's go ahead and refresh this a few times. And we will see that the overclocks are not applying correctly, okay? All the cards showed up showing low wattage right now but they haven't started mining yet i'm always getting this nvidia overclocked error i'm pretty sure this is just honestly this may be related but that's been happening for a while so refresh one more time and don't tell me it's gonna do it correctly when i try to show you guys nope there we go 150 watts each so if you weren't paying attention and your mining rig wasn't spec'd correctly, you could easily overload your power supplies. And you can actually hear mine kicking up in the background. So what you do is you stop the miner and then you go into flight sheet and just reapply it. And actually I'm gonna edit this since I got rid of that bad card. This can just go back to 1200 for the single card. So let me know if you guys know how to fix that because it's pretty frustrating and you can see it caused all my cards to ramp up to like 80% fan speed even in that short amount of time. And it's I've had it happen on multiple rigs and I've tried updating Hive OS and it's still happening. So it's definitely a pretty dangerous little glitch that's happening. So I'm gonna stick this other 3060 Ti back on here to be fired up another day. But these cards are getting a rest right now and they probably need it. They've been going for about six months straight. So I'll let them escape from the mines for a little bit. And let's plug this back in. I really wish these shelves could like, I had built almost like rolling parts that could extend out so I could work on the rig and then just slide them back in. This one's not too bad because I can just pull it out and rest it on the ground. But the, the up top ones, especially the middle one, is pretty hard to do any sort of maintenance on. Luckily, I don't really need to do much maintenance on it, so it turned out okay. But this one I just lift back up gently and make sure these two by fours, make sure these two by fours don't get caught on that back shelf. Just slide it right back. All right. See you in a couple months, buddy. Okay, well, I was coming to show you guys that the wattage is fixed, but now that 3070 aired out, which makes me think that this is actually a hardware issue instead of an overclocks issue, which makes sense because that card never had an issue overclocking that high. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the riser on this now. I wasn't planning on adding this to the video, but hey, it's fun to follow along the maintenance that goes into running a little mining operation like this. So I guess let's change the riser now. 
You don't need to switch out the USB or anything. Just grab a fresh riser and just swap that out. That's really the only thing you need to change. Of course, because that glitch is still in place, I'm gonna have to stop the flight sheet and restart it right when this thing boots back up. So we'll go ahead and turn this off. Plug our cables. If this actually is a bad riser, this will be surprisingly one of the first times I've actually had a riser die like that. I've definitely gotten dead on arrival ones before, but I've never had one just kind of crap out where no matter the card, it just airs out. So that's kind of interesting. Take our new one, unplug the six pin and the USB. And then if this fixes it, I'll let it run for a little bit. That riser will be going into the trash. I don't mind changing them if they're on the top shelf. I got plenty of room to work over here. All right, let's turn it back on. Winnie, did you drag that huge stick in the driveway? Okay, so this is turning into a little bit of an issue. Now we're getting a malfunction on that card. So next thing we need to do is probably change the smaller little card that goes on the riser and see if that fixes it. I'm also gonna reseat that one in the riser just to be sure, but that is strange that we would get another error. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, I went ahead and just pulled this off the riser, reseated it. And then that cable is actually this first one right here. So I switched out that little riser card and I may have just been able to fix it by reseating that. That wire runs pretty close to the power cables. I don't think that would mess with the signal wire, but maybe something to think about if it continues. But it did show up. But once again, when I refresh this, we're gonna be running at 160 watts. So I need to fix that again. So let me know guys. Shortly after I stopped filming this video, that card aired out again, and I did some more troubleshooting off camera, and what ended up being the issue was that that riser on the end of the rig was actually tilted because it was hanging off the board, and I'll show you a picture on screen. That was making the edge card on the graphics card itself, I guess, not get good contact with the PCIe connector and that caused it to be continuing to air out. So all I did was move that riser slightly in so that it was fully supported by the board and flat, and that ended up fixing the problem, and it's been a few days later and no issues at all. I'm Modern Mining. I hope you enjoy following my crypto mining journey, and I'll see you guys next time. Check out some of my other videos if you wanna keep watching what's going on in my farm. See you guys.